In today's episode, we're coming at you with a fun little experiment. I've even prepared a jar. In this episode, Hey there, fellas. In today's episode, we're coming at you with a fun little experiment. I've even prepared a jar. What for? Well, let me tell you. I'm sure a bunch of you have seen... I've actually watched a few videos myself, where some dudes took a bit of regular glass, heated it until it liquefied, and then made a sort of droplet by dipping it into some water or oil. They call that Prince Rupert's drop, and it is very, very durable. You can put it under a press, hit it with a hammer, and that tiny little droplet, it's gonna happily eat up basically anything you throw at it. So heating up glass and letting it drip into water is easy, but making it into that sort of droplet, as far as I've seen, it's really not that simple. I say we at least try making it, and then do some testing, for which we'll be using a car. Which part? We'll get to that in just a minute. Alright, let's do this. Now we've done some serious preparation. Right here we've got some glass sticks, a torch, propane and oxygen. This sort of torch should be enough to melt the glass. Alright, let's try this out. Here's hoping we're able to make that Rupert droplet, though it's not like the glass has any options. Here you go. This is going very well. Come on, baby, don't be shy. How to carefully extract it? You just grab... See the tail end? Wanna grab the tail? See that? And we even get a bonus droplet. Almost smashed it. And this is what we end up with. A Prince Rupert drop. Oh my. Put it on the concrete. Why are you even using this chunk of metal? Here, you try. Okay, let me give this a try. Oh, wow, for real. It's just glass. It literally exploded. This is going to be a very nice droplet. Did you hear that one explode? It looks like a bullet or something. Pretty neat. This one looks pretty legit. Take a closer look at the tail end. This one? Yeah, it looks about right, I'd say. Mind the tail? Yeah, okay. Now this one looks like a proper droplet. It is thick. This one is suitable for some experimentation. But first we need to break the tail off and determine whether this one is the right shape. Hard to break, huh? Oh, the end shatters. I guess this one isn't legit. Like this? Yeah. Break it. This one is also flawed, yeah? Let's just say this one is good and use it. Well, from the looks of it, I'd say it is the correct shape. Yeah, seems about right. At the very least, it is super close. This is starting to get pretty interesting. When we were using that cup, we were seeing some nice droplets. But here? Now we are using a tub, since we were constantly burning through those cups. Anyway, this doesn't seem to be working all that well. Instead of using regular glass, we took some kind of jar, which used to contain preserves or something like that. 
and that didn't work either. We even took a piece out of a lot of headlight, with no success. And here we are once again using those glass sticks. And for some reason, when the droplet comes falling down into the tub, it reaches the bottom and explodes. Maybe the water is the improper temperature. Who knows? Anyway, we've decided to change our strategy and try our luck with some motor oil. And here are all the droplets we were able to make. They do look pretty neat. When you're using oil, they even have a peculiar look to them. I guess at high temperature, when the glass is liquefied and you dip it into some oil, the oil around it begins to burn, and apparently any fumes that accumulate, they stick and give these droplets a distinct color. What a stylish droplet! Okay, so it washes off. It's not embedded in there these deposits on the glass. But we're not gonna be giving them a clean. Alright, so we've already shown you how durable they are. Here I've got a hammer that weighs one kilogram, you hit the droplet while it's on the concrete, and it escapes. But just how durable are these drops exactly? I remember seeing people sticking them under a press. We've got everything set up. Let's take that droplet. Wait a second, dude. So we've placed a plate underneath the plunger because the end is slotted on that thing. What's going on? One ton, 1.5 tons. Two, holy crap! How much is that? Almost three. Four tons, what do you know? That was interesting. Alright, so we've made ourselves some Rupert droplets. And even if... Honestly, this is the first time we've tried making them. And though they might not be completely spot on, at least they're... Then again, how would we know? You would have just seen one underneath a hydraulic press, which wasn't exerting a hundred tons, but that tiny droplet was able to withstand four tons of pressure. Anyway, yeah, so it can take some pressure. Okay, so right here I have a big car. Now, what do you think its most powerful element is? On this rig, the components that exert the most force would have to be the brake calipers. They clamp down on those pads hard, which is why we're going to try the following. We take that tiny droplet, after we slightly dismantle this big car of ours, and place that droplet in between the brake pad and the rotor. And that's when we try crushing it. Can the brake system generate enough force to crush that droplet? Or maybe it's not going to work? I don't know. What do you guys think? Why don't you pause the video and share your thoughts, so that we can read them later on. Hi, right, fellas, check this out. In all fairness, we've decided to do things a bit differently. We won't be placing the droplet in between the brake pad and the rotor. We simply won't be able to see it there. Instead, we've got this sort of tooth on the caliper. And here we're going to be able to clearly see both the droplet and the pad. This doesn't change anything, really. The caliper is going to be clamping down with the exact same force. All right, let's try crushing this with the brakes. Let me just carefully... There we go. It's right there in plain sight. Let's try this out. Squeeze them. Are you even pressing the pedal? Press harder. Holy cow, didn't I replace the guide pins? The tail just came off. Yeah, you keep on pressing. The droplet still hasn't shattered. Will do.
Did you see how the tail flew off? Keep on pressing. What, you can't crush it? No. You did it. Now I'd better keep my mouth shut. As not to swallow any glass. Okay, so that one you crushed. I guess it makes it defective or something. Okay, let's loosen up the caliper again. As in push the pistons back in. And try crushing another droplet. Isn't that nice? What a lovely looking droplet. I dig it. I take two. On to the next droplet. And we place the next droplet in here like so. Okay, great, I secured it. And you can begin pressing down on the brakes. Pump that pedal. I am pressing down on it slightly to keep the droplet from falling out of there. There we go. Yeah, keep pressing. Oh, that was too easy. Meaning the quality of this one was even worse. For crying out loud, dude. We still have this one. Which seems to have the right shape. I place it inside. Everything's ready. Push the pedal. Keep it up. Say what? Oh, you're pressing down with both legs now. Pressing yourself up against the seat. The tail has fallen off, but it still hasn't shattered. Holy crap! That glass grenades like... Was that hard? Yeah, it was hard. By how it snapped, you can tell that the pressure was really high. And another. Okay, let's try it out. Yeah, you did say that this one is subpar and it should easily shatter. And you were correct. Now this one is among those that turned out nice. It's as good as they get. It is pretty big though. Is it even going to fit in there? Can I let go? Just be careful. Let me just make sure it stays in place. Now this one should be a winner. It being such a fine example. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. Right, fellas, in order to substantiate the claims that we made, just look at how much pressure these droplets can endure. After removing the brake pad, see that dent in the metal plate? That droplet left a massive crater in there. And this deep mark in the brake pad was left by a tiny piece of glass. It's just glass. Now that we're done with the experiment, I'm curious as to how much force the calipers exert. You know what? I think maybe later I can read up on this and without going into the spec sheet, find some kind of way to measure the pressure that comes down onto those brake pads, the clamping force of the brake caliper. Now that should be rather interesting. Go ahead and share your thoughts in the comments, by the way. Okay, so I don't know whether it's a good thing or not, but ultimately it was the car that came out of this as the winner. Nothing to be upset about, really. This does mean that the brakes are good. And there you go. What a fun experiment. And a curious way to test the capabilities of those brakes. Excellent stuff. You should really try this out for yourselves, guys. Tempering a droplet in water... Is it really even tempering? Don't really know what you call it. I'm guessing glass is something you temper. I mean, it is liquefied when going in there, so the process of it hardening is what you'd call tempering. And as a result, it does become hard to crush. Now, when you get to that part, make sure to wear glasses, some gloves, maybe even a mask. Those tiny bits of glass pick up some serious speed when they're coming at you, to the point where you can feel it through your pants when they hit your legs. <laughs> Seriously though, guys, be careful. And that's all I have for you. The car won, and that's totally cool. Watch us, subscribe, send in your comments and suggestions, give us a big thumbs up. Alright, catch you later.